Welcome everybody to the keynote session. We hope you're enjoying the sessions that you've seen or you've been part of so far and are challenging yourselves to take the most away from this opportunity. If you are a fan of Strictly, I'm sure you will already be very familiar with our next speaker. I'm delighted to be joined by professional dancer, Amy Dowden. Hello everybody. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for inviting me, Gemma. I'm Absolutely. really excited. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We have some wonderful aspiring coaches who are joining us today as part of our wider Girl Active Coaches event, many of whom I'm sure will have seen you in action on Strictly, but we know there is so much more to your journey behind the scenes. So in your journey to becoming a professional dancer and your coach, role of coaching celebrities on Strictly. I'm sure the young coaches today would love to know a little bit more about your journey and how you have got to where you are. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, as most of you may know, I am a professional dancer on Strictly Come Dancing. I'm going into my fifth season of Strictly, but I'm going to take you right back to where it all started today and my journey to Strictly Come Dancing. It's not all the glitz and glamour that you see on the screen. I'm also going to talk about running my dance academy to teach you with celebrities, but also about my health battle that I've also got to deal with and live with on a daily basis. Right, so going back to younger Amy, I grew up in South Wales, Caerphilly, and when I was a little girl, I could not keep still. I had so much energy. My parents said I couldn't even keep still for a cartoon of 20 minutes. And they tried me in so many different activities. Um, and I absolutely loved every single one I went to. I loved school. I loved playing with my friends, my twin sister. But I was on holidays at my granddad's caravan in Cornwall. And in the clubhouse, once a week, they do a disco dancing competition. And on my birthday, my eighth birthday, I thought, I'm going to get up and have a go. And I loved it. I fell in love with the spotlights, the audience, the music, probably the attention, everything about it. And I won somehow, probably because I was wearing a big birthday badge. But I literally begged my parents the entire holiday to take me dancing. Um, and they were like, yep, yeah, okay then. I'll keep Amy and my twin sister, Rebecca, busy on a Saturday morning. Little did they know it was about to take over their lives. But Rebecca and I went to our local dance school, Chappelle's, in Caerphilly. And immediately I walked in and I fell in love. I fell in love. I can still visualise now little silver sparkly shoes, all the children dancing a jive at the time. And immediately it just became my life. Even at eight years old, I lived for Saturday mornings dancing. I'd be dancing in the shopping aisles while my mum was doing a weekly shop, you name it. I lived for my Saturday morning dancing. And after several weeks, my dance teacher called my mum in and said, we'd love for Amy to join the formation teams as a reserve. So they picked the 16 best under 12 dancers they have and then they need a few reserves. And immediately I was like, yes, that's what I've been working towards. I've been watching all these little girls dancing in this team and I wanted to be part of it. And what that meant was I got to go to Blackpool once a year with my fellow teammates. I wasn't dancing as I was reserved, but I still got to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? I got to learn the routine and be amongst it all. Anyway, I was only eight years old and I was walking into the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool and I turned to my mum and I was like, this is better than Disneyland. Oh, and I had to be bribed to leave the ballroom that day. I just loved it so much. I said to my mum, Mum, I want to be a professional dancer. And I was only eight years old. I then, after, when I was nine years old, got invited into the team. So I was training once a week for formation and a Saturday class. And my teachers pulled my mum and dad aside and said, um, we think Amy has what it takes to go all the way if you let us guide her. We don't want to push her too soon. And my parents were like, oh, right, okay. They knew, obviously, I loved it. Like, I was waking them up at 6 o'clock every Saturday morning, ready to go dancing at 11. <laughs> Literally, that was me. Um, but I guess then it came to their attention that maybe I had some talent. Um, and my parents also didn't want to push me too much. Uh, I was quite academic in school, but also my parents are very hard 
working class family and the ballroom and Latin circuit is very expensive and they always wanted to be fair with Rebecca, my twin sister and my older brother, myself, that we all had our hobbies and our, the time and money was shared between the three of us. So my teachers took that on board and was like, that's absolutely fine. We'll keep her with her formation dancing and her class. I obviously wanted to be doing private lessons, competitions up and down the country, but it just wasn't possible at that time. So I kept on dancing. And honestly, I always say it's been my savior. You'll understand as I speak on, but. I look back at my childhood and it's just full of the happy dancing memories. My my friends at the dance centre, my teachers at the dance school, they became my community, my family really. And being part of such a wonderful dance school is something I always aspired and I wanted to have my own dance school with that same family community environment. So I kept in my teams and I kept working really hard at my classes and in school. And then when I was 11 years old, that bubbly Amy, chatty, as you can tell, who had so much energy, started to become quite poorly. It was Christmas Eve Eve, to be exact. And uh, my parents were taking us to Winter Wonderland. Now, normal Amy would be like itching to go in the car, to get on the ice and to be showing off and whizzing round. But my parents noticed and in the lead up to it that I had absolutely no energy, especially considering the normally bouncy, happy Amy that I am. And um, but anyway, managed to push myself to go. And I started having stomach um, pains when I got to Winter Wonderland and I started being sick. So my parents got us straight in the car home and within a couple of hours, I was in extreme pain and I was passing out. So my parents obviously took me straight to the hospital and they thought I had appendicitis. After a couple of hours, that was ruled out and I wasn't really sure what was wrong. They didn't know if I had a virus. Well, over the next few months then, I become really poorly. I was in and out of hospital constantly and nobody really knew what it was. And this was how my life was going to be basically um, for the next few years. And we just didn't have a diagnosis. I was 11 years old. I was, you know, loving my formation, dancing, ballroom and Latin, loving being in school. Um, but I would literally have flare ups where I'd be ill for a couple of weeks at a time. Then I'd be OK. Then I'd be ill again. And I remember even being in hospital and my dance teacher, Philip, bringing my mum saying, do you think Amy's going to be well enough to be able to dance in formation at Blackpool? And my mum was like, well, it's Amy's life. She wants to be well enough. And they, you know, they kept my front position. I'd worked so hard to get um, to be able to be the front girl in the formation team. And Philip was like, don't worry, we're, we're not going to take it away from her. We'll have a backup plan just in case she's poorly. Lucky enough, I was well enough. But for a couple of years, all through my teens, I'd have these flare ups, these attacks, we'd call them, where I'd be ill for a couple of weeks and I'd be well for a couple of months and ill again. And my mum would keep a diary on what I was eating, you know, anything that seemed to fall a pattern to why I would be ill. But we put it down to maybe irritable bowel, to maybe hormones and my body changing in those early teenagers. We we and the doctors didn't really know what was wrong. And to t um, the tests needed for the condition I've actually been diagnosed now were quite excruciating to put a young girl through at the age of 11. So I guess that's why as well it took me longer to be diagnosed. Anyway, so I did get to Blackpool as a front girl at 11 years old in the under 12s team and we were lucky enough to be crowned British champions. And then comes moving on to secondary school, going to my local comprehensive school with my twin sister Rebecca and all our friends, St Martin's School. My brother already um, there, got a brilliant reputation, literally can just walk to school. Well, I'd been there for year seven and something didn't feel right. I started Googling scholarships in London and these dance and theatre schools that you could be at. And I started applying for them online. So my mum would come home from work and get all these application packs. And she was like, Amy, what are you applying for? You can't go move to London. And also I had my health problems, which we didn't know what was wrong with me and they could flare up at any times. But I was just like, mum, I just want to dance all day. My formation class once a week and my Saturday morning class was, wasn't was enough. Literally, 
all I could think about was dancing, dancing, dancing. And my mum and dad were like, Amy, we, we, we can't have you move to London just yet, darling. And they wanted me to carry on in school. So I found a school in the area which was building a dance studio and was going to have a GCSE dance apart, um, department. Now, bear in mind, I'm 12 years old. Um, and I was adamant that I wanted to be able to dance in my lunch breaks after school. So I persuaded um, the school I was in, my local council, my mum and dad, that I was going to move to this new school, which had a dance department. And I knew nobody there. I it meant I had quite a walk to catch a bus I'd have to pay for to go to school, um, leaving my twin sister, who obviously I've been attached to my entire life, and my school friends from primary and nursery. But I just knew it's, it's what I needed to do to be able to dance even more. So I joined St. Kenneth School, and I have to say, like, I'm so lucky. I have a wonderful school who believed in me, who pushed me. I got to then do ballet and contemporary dance through school. Um, I got to do GCSE dance. I was lucky enough to be the first student there to get an A star. And it just allowed me, as well as, you know, pushing my academic subjects, though, to dance even more. As I said, I come from a working class family. Dancing's expensive, but I could do this through school. So it comes to my GCSE year and again I'm thinking oh I want to go to college and dance that's all I want to do but my careers advisors my parents the head teacher like oh Amy the dancing world's a tough world to break into don't put all your eggs in one basket why not do your A-levels and then decide oh and I was like but I just want to dance that's all I want to do and my parents said to me look get your A-levels and we promise you can then spread your wings so I said, okay, I did my A-levels and I did love school and I loved my friendship group. I did performing arts, of course, because I got to dance, English literature, English language and PE. Um, I was lucky enough to come away with straight A's. And that's when I was like, right, all my friends were applying to university. But I was like, no, 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 no. Now is the time I'm going to dance. So I was applying to university, lucky enough to get scholarships for dance in London. Um, but when it comes to the application, uh, you couldn't take any classes outside because how they want to develop you as a dancer, they didn't want any interruptions. So that meant letting go of my ballroom and laughing and dancing. But I knew at heart, that's what I wanted to do. And I've always wanted to be true to myself and I told myself I had a goal. If I didn't achieve it by I was 21, I was going to go to university and um, go into primary teaching, which was, you know, teaching kids is a passion of mine as well. Um, and I just thought, no, I can't. I can't stop my ballroom and Latin dancing. So I decided I was going to get myself a full time job to be able to fund me, to be able to have the lessons that I needed to become the dancer I wanted to. My head teacher was like, Amy, are you sure? You know, I'd come away come away with A's. My parents were like, Amy, are you sure university isn't your, the option for you? My twin sister was going off to university. My brother was already there. All my friends were going. I was like, no, I knew what I wanted to do. So I took the decision and it was risky because back then it wasn't the boys in Wales. They weren't dancing. They were busy playing rugby. So I, you know, to even get myself a partner, I was competing against, you know, People who'd been champions since under 12s, under 16s, who'd had a profile and name for themselves in the competitive industry of ballroom and Latin, you know, professionals, children as well, who had their parents' name and teachers. And then little Amy Funkerfilly, nobody'd ever heard of me, but I just knew it's just what I wanted to do. And I loved it so much. And I was prepared to do anything, can give up anything. So I got myself a full time job in an office in Cardiff and I was working nine till half past five and then I found myself a partner in Birmingham um, who had a quite a good name for himself so already then he was going to get my name out there and I would be traveling on a Tuesday night straight from work on he would travel to me on a Thursday night and then I'd drive straight from work on a Friday train all weekend we'd be going to London for lessons I loved it but then when I was 18 my health came with a vengeance. I was really, really poorly. Um, I spent at least a week 
every month in hospital in severe pain, sickness, and we just didn't know what was wrong with me. I would lose a lot of weight. I had really bad energy levels. And from the year when I was 18 to 19, when my dancing just got started, it literally like, it just stopped, it went flat because I was just too ill. And when I was 19, uh, I got really poorly in the December and I was so poorly that Cardiff Hospital decided to transfer me to London Hospital, where I stayed in hospital for six weeks. I was finally then diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And for me, oh, I was relieved. It was a, I was being told I, I was having a chronic illness that there was no cure for and I, I was going to have to live with for the rest of my life. But to me, it was like, no, I've got answers. Finally, I can get on the right treatment or if I needed surgery. And then I could start my dancing dreams, these enormous dreams I had. And just my Crohn's disease at the time, because we didn't have a diagnosis, was just completely getting in the way. And do you know what? When I was in hospital for those six weeks, I knew what it felt like to have my dancing taken away from me. And I promised myself that, you know, when I was well and better, that nothing was going to stop me. My partner, my fiance, Ben, as well, he'd saw me so poorly as well. And I guess then when we were training to our opposition couples, I really knew what pain felt like. I really knew what it felt like to suffer or to miss out or defeat even. Ben had seen me in so much pain. So when we were at stamina training or lessons or competitions, and you know, you feel like your body's going to give up. He used to say to me, how could I ever say I'm going to give up when I watched you in so much pain? And for me, I always had that heartache. I knew what it felt like to have my dancing taken away from me. So a lot of it as well, I say, is mind over body. So we knew, I think, as a competitive couple, maybe to some of our opposition, that you can always push your body that little bit more. And we just knew what it felt like to have our dancing taken away from me and us. And I think having Crohn's disease and going through that is actually what gave me the strength, the determination, the motivation to become the dancer I am today. And I look back and think, would I have actually achieved the results and what I have today if it wasn't for that? Probably not. Dancing give me that. My Crohn's give me the strength for my dancing. And another frustration of mine was that people used to say to me, oh, how's your health, Amy? And not be asking about my dancing. And I'd be like, I want them to be asking me, how is my dancing going, not my health? Obviously, they cared about me. But um, when I did get well, and it, it wasn't at 19, it took me till 21 to get on the right medication. And, you know, and I still have flare-ups now. But... Um, when I was on a high and I was going doing really well with my health, we pushed ourselves to the limit. We were lucky enough to work with the best coach that is, Richard Porter in LA. We were flying back and forth there. He taught us so much. He taught us as an athlete or an Olympic athlete, you don't praise them until they win gold. And that's the attitude he had with us. And I'm just so incredibly lucky that he believed in us and pushed um, us. And some of my highlights in my career has got to be um, winning the British Championships in 2016 and being the first all British couple in over 20 years to take that title. Then actually being asked to be a professional dancer on Strictly Come Dancing. Now, if you told me several years before when I was lying in that hospital bed, I was going to become a professional dancer on Strictly and win the British Championships, then I would have said, no way. And even the people who back then told me that it was never going to be possible for me to achieve them, you know, I it's kind of nice looking back saying and looking at them saying, well, I did it. And that even in itself gave me motivation and determination. When people would say to you, oh, no, it's too stressful. With your condition, you're never going to make it. I used to think, how dare you? You're not living in my body. I'll be the decider on what's too much for me. So again, that gave me strength and courage. And I always used to think, you know, when we have bad results or bad days, don't get bitter. You get better and push yourselves on. But I was actually asked to do Strictly the year before. And Ben and I, when we started dancing together and working with our coach in LA, we had one dream, and that was to become British champions and both my dreams came at the same time you know strictly come dancing like that is the accolade every dancer wants to be on the biggest tv show for dancing in the world and I can remember being so excited when they asked me but then 
they wasn't asking my partner then and I it was tough I had to make a decision and I could live with for the rest of my life and I didn't inside I couldn't take away Ben's dreams and also something that our coaches our sponsors our family had you know built up for us and I couldn't just walk away and take the glory and go off on Strictly Come Dancing and would have enjoyed it and loved it like I do now I guess um and I remember not knowing would they ever come back and ask me again and having to explain to them I'm so sorry I, I just explained I couldn't take Ben's dream away from him I couldn't live with myself and I said I hope you see that if I ever get this opportunity again you'll see how loyal and dedicated I will be to the show and we went on and we wasn't guaranteed to win we'd been second the year before um but in the build-up to it you know it seemed quite confident that we would but until then I, I could have been ill I uh, could have broken a bone could have just not danced well but we we was lucky enough to be crown champions and then a couple of months later Strictly Come Dancing did come and ask me to join the show and I can't explain the feeling um and I guess that's also something that I would advise to anybody is trust your own judgments, be true to yourself. You only have yourself to blame. Um, yeah, and I'm very lucky that in a space of a couple of months, all my dreams came true. And what's amazing now that being in the position I am in now, I'm able to raise awareness for Crohn's disease and other sufferers and also inspire them or give them the support to also you know, achieve their dreams that when they have the darkest of days to, you know, show them that you can have the best and the brightest of days as well. And I love teaching my celebrities on strictly to having experienced dancers, to having dancers come in and, you know, literally learning the dance to the music. And I love having to adapt my choreography and my teaching style around them. I think for everybody, there's not a certain teaching method. It's, you know, adapting to your you know, my people, even at my dance academy or my celebrity, their personality and what they need is from Brian Connolly, year one, who'd like a tea break on the hour every hour, to Karim, who'd like short and intense few hours, to JJ last year, who, um, former Marine, who got injured um, in an explosion, to needing to do, you know, short bursts but also just developing their love for dance and their confidence and their musicality, each so different but so lovely. And I just feel really, really, you know, blessed. I wake up every day feeling blessed that from where I've been and I guess what I've been through has built up resilience in order for me to have what I've achieved. I, I just feel so, so lucky. And yes, I may have won a British title, and I'm now on Strictly Come Dancing. But I would say my biggest achievement is being now Amy the Dancer and not Amy with Crohn's disease. It's part of me, but it, it doesn't define me. Wow, Amy, thank you so much for sharing your personal journey with us. It is such an inspiring story and one which I'm sure our young coaches will take so much from. We have a few questions that we would love to ask you. You spoke a little about a little bit in your story about some of the challenges that you've faced in your journey. We know the road to success is not always an easy one, and we talk in YST a lot about a lot about Team You. How important have so how important have the people around you been on your journey? And what is your biggest motivator to keep you going when things get tough? Absolutely. Um it's I would say a journey is like a roller coaster you have the highs and the lows and you have to have an, a support team around you family friends your coaches and what helped me the most is my coach installed from in both Ben and I from a young age from going to competitions in our early 20s was it doesn't matter if you've won or if you've come six or didn't make the final uh, because on that journey to that long-term goal is going to be a roller coaster but if you stand there waiting for everybody to come and congratulate you when you've won, when you don't, it's even harder because you're really low. But also, even if you've won, come six, come third, what you're doing tomorrow in the in the training room doesn't change. It's staying on that journey and focus on becoming the best you can be and not becoming result driven. It's always improving you, like so improving me as a dancer and an athlete, not becoming that result driven focus. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Who are the some who are some of the people that helped you on that journey? And who are the, some of the people that help you keep focused and striving to do the best? 
So obviously my co our main coach and our teachers, Richard Court, and we had several teachers around us. We were a real team. Uh, my mum and dad, everything I wanted to do is I wanted to make them proud. You know, they devoted their lives to us children. My dad worked seven days a week in order for us, uh, me and my brother and sister, to achieve our dreams. Also Ben's, my dance partner's parents as well, and just each other. Do you know what I mean? It's I used to write a bucket list every year what I wanted to tick off and you know, is yeah, just it was my friends and my family, but yeah, it was the closest ones my mum, my dad, my coach, and Ben. That's yeah, and I'd always walk onto the floor and they would for a competition and they would always be in the back of my mind before I took my first step. Amazing. It sounds like you have a really strong support mechanism around you, which is brilliant. And yeah. um, it was really inspiring to see how positive you took your diagnosis of Crohn's disease, particularly as you had been so unwell. What was the one thing would you say that kept you so determined to get back to dancing through that process? I think it's because I knew the heartache of having my dancing taken away from me. Whilst I was in hospital for six weeks, the British Championships was going on and I was missing out. I was just stuck staring at four walls and a clock in hospital. And that heartache was horrible. And I just knew that, you know, when I was better, that I had to push myself and I was determined not to make it happen again. Yeah, I missed obviously lots more competitions along the way, but yeah. Um, I think that's what gave me the strength and the determination as well, if I'm honest. When, you know, having something taken away from you that means so much, it's painful. Absolutely. And it's a true showcase of resilience too, I think, to be able to experience that and still push through it to get to your dream. Yeah, absolutely. And I think resilience was built up in me through my Crohn's disease. I'm not sure would I have had that resilience if it wasn't for my Crohn's. I'm not too sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm quite a sensitive case, you see. Like, <laughs> feel people don't have to look at me the wrong way and I cry. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think that having Crohn's and going through what I had to go through from a young age did, you know, I become braver, stronger, determined. It, it built my character up, I guess. So it's such an inspiring story. When you are on Strictly and you're paired with a dancer, I can imagine there is a huge learn, learning curve um, depending on the ability and the motivations of the person that you're paired with. Yes. As a coach, how do you work to make sure you get the best out of them? They've got to enjoy it. If they're not enjoying it, you read through to the nation and you don't get the best out of your student, I believe so. It's making sure they're dancing to a track they love, um, that they love the concept, making the teaching as fun and the training days as fun as you possibly can do. Yes, we know that 40 odd million are going to tune in on Saturday nights so and we need to get the work done. But for me, it's, it's so important to bring their personality out through the dance. And I just want them to fall in love with dancing. At the end of the day, it's an entertainment show. And yeah, you bring the best out in anyone if they're enjoying it, surely. Brilliant, Amy. And final question, the young people watching are likely change makers within their school and communities and they want to make a real difference and you are a fabulous role model for others. So what is one piece of advice that you would like to leave them with as a takeaway from this session? Always be true to yourself. You know, you can have many people try and, you know, act in what you should and shouldn't do but you know deep in down. And a quote that I always live by is, don't get bitter, get better. Love that one. Thank you so much, Amy, for taking the time to be here with us today. And we wish you the best of luck for this coming series of Strictly. We'll all be rooting for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And anytime.